Good evening. We've never done it this way before. So we, we don't really know what we're doing, and we don't really know what you're doing, and we're just going to make it up as we go along. I usually say to uh, brides, uh, brides and grooms or whoever is getting baptized in the family, I say, we're going to rehearse, and then whatever happens, happens. So that's, that's the way it's going to be tonight. We are so thrilled to be able to be outdoors. We've been watching the weather very cautiously all week, and even this morning weren't sure it was going to work out, but it sure has. So this is all for you. We are thrilled to have Bishop Dee Dee here and her staff also with her. Uh, Meredith Cadet Sanderson is somewhere. Where is she? There she is, who will be ordained on Saturday. So if you feel like saying some prayers during this service, that would be awesome. And also, Canon Carey is here as well, and our deacon, Chuck Stewart. And you're, you're all just sort of sitting uh, out there with family and your, your clergy. When the time comes for confirmation, we're going to ask you to come forward. I'm really not sure how that's going to work, but it, it'll be just right. This is St. James Worship Band. We do worship outdoors every Sunday uh, in the summer, weather permitting, and this is the band that plays. And so we thought, well, if we're going to be outdoors, we're going to we're going to have the band. So we invite you to stand and sing and prepare your hearts for worship. Preachers of our God and King, lift up your voices when I sing, oh praise Him, hallelujah, thou burning sun with golden beams, thou silver moon with soft and deep, oh praise Him, oh praise Him, hallelujah. Wind that are so strong, the clouds that sail in heaven along. Oh, praise Him, Hallelujah! Thou rising sun and praise rejoice. We like the evening find a voice. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him, Hallelujah! Him in humbleness, oh praise Him, hallelujah, praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit, three in one, oh praise Him, oh praise Him, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, thank you for bringing us together here in this beautiful space to celebrate you and to be part of this affirmation of our faith. Amen. Sin, who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness? He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing, love so amazing, Jesus Messiah. Sinners, the red 
ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. Body the bread, His blood the wine, broken and poured out, all for love. so amazing, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, rescue from sin. Messiah, Lord of all, all our hope is in you, all our hope is in you, all the glory to you, God, the light of the world. Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue from sin. one body and one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, the Lord be with you, let us pray. Grant, almighty God, that we who have been redeemed from the old life of sin by our baptism into the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, may be renewed in your Holy Spirit and live in righteousness and true holiness through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 61, 1 through 9. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to procra proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn for Zion, to to give them garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of the faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up from the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. 
Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners shall till your land and dress your vines. But you shall be called priest of the Lord. You shall be named ministers of our God. You shall enjoy the wealth of the nations and their riches you shall glory. Because their shame was double and dishonor was proclaimed as their lot, therefore they shall possess a double portion. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faith faithfully give the, their recompense, and I will make an everlasting convenient with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon behind me and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, to not think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have men, many members, and not, all me and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. Uh, one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, give us ears to hear 
and courageous hearts to respond. Amen. Now, I want to say to begin with that if I see you looking past me, I'll fully understand. <laughs> and if I turn around and look away, I hope you'll understand. <laughs> <laughs> what a glorious moment to be here and to look out over this beautiful lake and these beautiful friends and this beautiful moment. We truly are on sacred ground. And what a great moment this is to have this audacious reading. Audacious. Jesus gets up in a synagogue and he reads from the Hebrew scriptures. And the Hebrew scriptures saying that a Messiah is coming and the Messiah will look like this. And then he reads it and everyone's staring at him and he said, Today these scriptures have been fulfilled in your hearing. Today I have come. This is a great reading for confirmation, a great reading for anyone being received into the church or for these pastoral offices, because you are also a fulfillment of God's promise. Now, the world has a message for you. It's a very clear message. You may recognize it. You're not enough. You're not skinny enough. You're not tall enough. You're not smart enough or fast enough. And what you have to say about Jesus isn't that interesting. And the world will tell you over and over, no one's interested. It's not enough. But the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ is this. God is enough. And you are enough because God has created you and empowered you and called you and sent you out. And your voice is the very voice this world needs to hear proclaiming Jesus. Your hands are the very hands this world needs to work the love of Christ. Your brains and your abilities, your gifts and your talents are exactly what the world has been waiting to hear because God has called you. God has anointed you this day. A confirmation, granted, is a very brave thing to do, especially after a year and a half like this. Here we are. We made it. We sang. Hallelujah. <laughs> I can't tell you how happy I was about that. <laughs> there were some people pretty upset with me about singing. <laughs> I kept saying, I didn't make up the science. <laughs> but here we are singing. And praising God in this beautiful space and knowing that God loves you. God has called you. God wants you the way you are. And all the, our brokenness and our insecurities, we can set them down. Because it really is not about being perfect. If it were, that would be a sad story. But it's not about being perfect. It's about you being holy who you are, empowered to be who you are, you being audacious enough to be you in the face of a world that doesn't even know who it is. Now, these readings, and I don't know if you have a, a, uh, a practice of reading scripture, but I commend these to you, especially this reading from Romans those days when you feel hopeless or down. To read these words, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Be transformed by knowing that Jesus loves you. Be transformed by knowing that love is stronger than hate, that forgiveness is more important than a grudge. And that grudges only keep us bound, not the other person. You've heard that saying, that idea that when we hold grudges, where it's like drinking poison, waiting for the other person to die. 
And that is what it's like. That forgiveness frees us. We just celebrated freedom. That when we love, we are loved. That when we forgive, we are forgiven. The Convermans and I had an opportunity to talk just before this. And I commended to them what a wonderful thing it is that after this year and a half, they want to be confirmed and have waited and are here to do this today. Audacious. To have hope in the midst of a world that's so afraid. Audacious to love in the midst of a world that's so broken by divisions. Audacious to love a God who's present in this very moment in the grass and the waves and the sky and the trees. To know that you are loved. It is an audacious moment and a beautiful moment to know that you are called by God. And not to forget that the thing we've been waiting for, and if you've been like a lot of folks, a lot of folks say things like, well, why doesn't somebody, well, you know what somebody should do. Well, why doesn't anybody? It may be because we're waiting on one another, on us, to be the people who love, to the be the people who create space, to be the people who are not broken into categories of this or that. To be people who are fully alive to each moment to know that the love of Jesus Christ is the most compelling, transformative thing in this world. That all the things you've done wrong up until this point mean nothing because the next step is all that God is going to do right in us. That even our mistakes are transformed into resurrection. Now, I wonder for you, in this moment with confirmation, and especially for those who have been confirmed or those who are older or those who are not, part or not being confirmed today, what does it mean to you, confirmation? And what does your own confirmation mean? I invite you to turn in your bulletins to page, to page six because you will be part of this covenant and you might want to read the fine print before you respond. I'm just saying. <laughs> you might want to, you know, hum or something. I don't know. But <clears throat> we start off, of course, we talk about who we believe in. God the Father, the Holy Spirit, Jesus. We say who it is we're making a covenant, covenant with. And keep in mind this covenant, think of like a marriage vow or an ordination vow or a confirmation. It's a covenant. It means this is what my life is going to be about. This is what your life is going to be about. These are the things we are going to do as followers of Jesus. That we will continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship and breaking of bread. That your faith will not be the same tomorrow as it is today. That it will not be the same next year as it was this year. Because you will grow in the faith and learn about Jesus and grow up and participate in the life of the church. And that you will continue to be more and more about the love of Jesus in your life. The thing that we forget in the church all the time is that by coming together as God's people, we're more than we could ever be as individuals. That as you confirm your baptismal vows, you become some part of something that's much larger than just even this gathering. That we're part of the kingdom of God growing and becoming and so we promise and vow that we will continue to grow in faith, that we will resist evil. And boy, right now, I think that's a big one. Because if we had to point to any evil that's breaking us, I think it's the evil to be right, that our opinion is right, that we think we're right and they're wrong, that we're blind to the ways in which we want what we want, and don't realize how it harms other people. How we look at racism and ignore it and think, well, I don't did never experience that. To persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, start over. You get a big do-over with Jesus. It's pretty cool. Anyone plays golf, you're going to recognize that mulligan right there. I mean, really. And unlike golf, you get a lot of them. 
Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ? Let me say right here, will you be willing to be embarrassed because you follow Jesus? And we always say, well, I'll do that. But, you know, it's so embarrassing. I don't want to really be embarrassed. Have you not embarrassed yourself by now? <laughs> really? I mean, if you're going to be embarrassed by something, be embarrassed because you follow Jesus. Will you seek and serve Christ and all persons, the people you like, you don't like, the people you agree with, you don't agree with, the people you understand, you don't understand? Will you seek Christ in each situation? And will you be about something the world doesn't understand, which is loving anyway? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? We're having trouble with that. We want to call people names. We want to put down theories. We want to say it's all about this or all about that. Instead of understanding that if our neighbor is hurting, Jesus is hurting. That if our neighbor is held back because of the color of their skin, it's an offense to God. And we're God's people. And we can do nothing but stand up and say, no, justice, mercy, peace. Confirmation is no little thing. And the vows and the commitments we make to God have meaning and breadth and life. But they're also the source of life. And if we've been feeling broken down and put down by this world that tells us we're not enough, tonight we stand together and raise up that, yes, God is enough. And we're enough in God. And God delights in you. God is so excited that this is your moment to be alive. All of heaven has waited for this moment for you with your giftedness and your abilities to love Jesus and to serve your neighbor. We are here for confirmation, all of us, all of us confirming what it is our life is about and celebrating this beautiful night and being part of a God's kingdom that in unites us all in love and mercy and hope and restoration. May your mind be transformed. May your heart be renewed. And may your vows be fulfilled in the hearing of all. You're enough. God is good. Amen. invite those who are being confirmed to stand. If you're going to be confirmed, please stand. The candidates will now be presented. Thank you. Oops. <clears throat> now I'm going to ask this of the candidates. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal vows. I invite you to stand as you are able. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? suffered an unconscious Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? And respect the dignity of every human being? Let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Send them into the world and witness to your love. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself, and that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that Spirit to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I think that's what it is. Can you hear me if I talk there? Okay. All right, Thomas. Defend, O Lord, your servant Thomas with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O oh Lord, your servant Courtney with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your, holy, in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Defend, O Lord, your servant, Kathy, 
with your heavenly grace that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Defend, O Lord, your servant Ted with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Haley with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Holly with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Reuben with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Oh, here comes Kate. That, that works. Hey, Kate. Defend, O Lord, your servant Kate with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Diana with your holy with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Kelly with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O oh Lord, your servant Olivia with your heavenly grace that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Kate with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Ben with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. 
almighty and ever-living God. Let your fatherly hand be over these, your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them. And so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word, that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. That's good. And you're going to turn the book? Or no? Which prayer are we doing? Y'all don't sing, right? I don't think I will sing. I can sing. You can do it. Can you do that? Yeah. I know the guy. That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, please. Peace be with you. Is she doing the offering? No, she's doing the offering. Oh. Dear friends, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice unto God.
Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that That's you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted. As you're able, please stand. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to do so. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. 
recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. This altar is not ours, it is the Lord's. So come to this altar, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often, and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed, come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Sorry, my fault. I always forget something, so that was the thing that I was going to forget this time. We're going to have two lines. Uh, the bishop will be administering communion in one line, and Deacon Chuck Stewart will be in the other line. Our ushers have hand sanitizer, and we ask that you go to the ushers first, so one here and one over here, and receive hand sanitizer. And we want actually the ushers far enough away so that there's time for it to dry before you get to, before you receive what you are going to receive in your hands. So look for, you. can ushers stick your hands up so people can see where, that's your target right there. And then you'll come forward here and then make your way back to your seat. And I apologize for interrupting the band. That was so beautiful. is calling have you come to the end of yourself do you thirst for a drink from the well Jesus is calling oh come to the altar the Father's arms are open was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason. 
reason to wait, Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and pay them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born, Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior, isn't he I invite you to take a moment of quiet and listen to the birds and the waves and take in this moment before we close in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have given us his spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world peace. Grant us strength, courage, to love, and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
the blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. darkness we were waiting without hope and without light then the heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and promise to a virgin came the word from the throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt To reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake you died. That stone was moved for good, for the Lamb that conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, and the Spirit lit the flame. Though the gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint. By his blood and all his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings, praise forever to the King of kings. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in this spirit. Thanks be to God. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Praise forever to the King of kings. 